Hi, yes, I'm outdoors. I thought I'd make this a main channel video, even though it was supposed to be a second channel, because I've already, this is actually part three. Uh, the first two parts are over on my EEV Blog 2 channel. If you're not subscribed to EEV Blog 2, check it down below on the air, up here, wherever. Um, and I'm nearing 100K subscribers, so I might be able to get my maybe my silver play button uh, for the second channel. Anyway, I've been doing some nerd barbecuing, and um, I've been successful, hence why I know I can put this one on the main channel. But anyway, you wouldn't know what I'm doing here. I'm actually, uh, you might recognize this. It's the IBM uh, TCM, the thermal conduction module, and I'm trying to get some chips off it because I'm uh, sending them to uh, Ken uh, Sheriff, who's I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Sorry, Ken um, Sheriff, who is uh, like a the retro uh, computer uh, reverse engineering guy. So he said he wanted a couple of these chips. So I uh, went to a lot of effort to try and get these puppies off. And this is my third attempt at it. Anyway, doing some outdoor nerd barbecuing. So yeah, go over, check out my EV Blog 2 channel. Uh, definitely, because I'm always dumping the content over there. Nearing 100,000 subs. Anyway, on with the video. Hi, I'm doing some outdoor nerd barbecuing here. This is how you do it. Uh, none of this uh, beef eater rubbish. You uh, use an IR preheating plate. Anyway, this is the IBM uh, TCM again. <coughs> got it outdoor for a reason. Jeez, I can smell it. Um, and I've got it set for uh, 350 actually. And I'm just going to try and heat the whole thing. I don't know if you can see, but there are definitely fumes coming off that. Not sure if you can see it, but uh, it has reached uh, 220 on top. So that actually might be enough to melt all the joints. So um, the display down here, even though you can't see it, 270 it says. You can see the little uh, temperature sensor under there. Anyway, I'm going to try and get one of these off. They still ain't budging. No, nah, I'm cracking them. They're very fragile. You can crack them easily. You can see, crack these things. But, oh, gee, oh, please get, no, something just dropped on me. One of the birds just dropped something on me. Not sure if it's poop or not, but anyway, <laughs> dangers of being outdoor and indoors in Australia. Could get a drop bear any minute, you don't know, but yeah, not sure. I can really see the um, the fumes coming off that. Thankfully, they are blowing away from me. Yeah, don't know what it is. Certainly don't want to breathe it in, but anyway, I'll let it go for a bit more, and I'll try and get some off, because we've got different types of uh, chips on here. That one, like there's a little one there, these bigger ones, I don't know if they're all the same, but if I can get them off, I'll try and get a few different ones. Okay, I'm starting to think this was a bad idea. Look at how it's all changing the color on there. All that oil, I guess, is burning. I tried to get as much off as, as I could, but yeah, oh, it's sizzling. It's like, it's, I heard it actually sizzle. Wow, no, it's still not budging. Yeah, I, like visually, I've, ah, oh, this thing's just horrible now. Oh, well, it could all wash off, don't know. Okay, we're 250 on top now. Still not budging. These uh, caps will just uh, come off, I think. Yeah, the caps will just come right off. Oh, look at all the brown. Oh, this is just, this was a bad idea. Anyway, maybe it'll clean up, because I liked this thing visually. Look at all the oil just browned up and burnt. Disgusting. Okay, we've got 265. Not, not budging. Maybe one in the middle. Nope. Okay, we're 270 to 275 now. Can't remember the melting point of this solder, but it was it was supposed to be low. Ugh, nothing in the middle. Anything. You, I should have bought my hot air gun home. Could have <laughs> done some extra heating from the top. This is, come on. This is crazy. Not budging. Okay, we're like 280, 280. Oh, hey, hello. Hello. Got one. Got one. Got one. We got one. Woohoo. Done. We got one. 
Done! Can we get the wonder? Yes! 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 Okay, I guess we found the melting point. Wow! Winner, winner! Chicken dinner! Let me get this little one here. No! No, this end's not gonna... No, this end's not gonna budge. Do we have a little one up the top? No, we don't. Just get another one for kicks. Wow! What about this corner down here? No, I like that colour. That sucker there. There we go. Wow. Nice. Just for completeness. We'll take that off. There you go. Did work. We just had to melt reach the uh, reach the melting point. It's done so on the top, but uh, hasn't done it on the bottom. So it's a bit of a bummer. I wanted this little one down here. Nah. Yeah, that was like over 280. So I guess there's your melting point. Well, roughly, you know. <laughs> Depends on the emissivity and the IR meter and everything else. So yeah, it's interesting how uh, we couldn't do this with uh, the preheater, like at 150 or whatever it was, and the hot air uh, gun on top. Whoop! <laughs> I gotta make sure I'm upwind. They're downwind. The air current, they tipped them off. Downwind? You think I could smell them coming? I did. Jeez, that's not something you have to say uh, shooting a video. Um, yeah, it's interesting how that, uh, yeah, the, the heat gun just wouldn't do it. I mean, yeah, this is like a 60 plus layer PCB and uh, a huge ceramic substrate. And it, it's taken me probably, oh, what, a good hour to heat this thing up. I mean, you know, to ramp it up. Absolutely incredible. Um, it's getting uh, sort of the radiant heat from the elements, plus there's uh, some conduction happening as well through the metal pins at the bottom. They'd all be going into the substrate, all contributing to heating the whole thing up. But you can see how the oil has just burned. Look at it on those pads down there. Wow, that's just, that's terrible, Muriel. Oh, I know people are going to hate to see this, but well, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Still trying to get that little chip off though. No, unfortunately I can't get that small chip to budge. It's just not heating up on the bottom there. Don't want to have to like flip the whole thing around and, oh no, no. I think we'll be happy with our score of uh, five chips here. I'll pack those up, send them off to Ken, and uh, hopefully um, not too much damage has resulted and he can get some nice uh, die shots from those and maybe some reverse engineering or something. That'd be cool. And wouldn't you know it, just after I said that, I got it. I got it, that tiny little one down there. So there you go. Got one little one, three biggies, and two of the, uh, d d the I don't know, the pinky colored ones. <laughs> so I got no, I assume they're like the uh, memory or something like that. Anyway, that's very cool. We finally got it. So I'm gonna switch that bad boy off. Just gonna sit it outside here, let it cool down. It'll probably take a couple of hours to cool down. Um, hope it doesn't rain. It's a bit overcast here. Anyway, there you go. That is nerd barbecuing. We finally got it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, let's take a quick look at these before I send them away under the Tagano microscope. And I've tried to clean them up a bit with some isopropyl, but they're still a bit gunky. But, um, but yeah, look, this is really cool. Okay, so this is one of those uh, pink, larger pink top ones, which I thought were the memory. And if you... Like, you know, and once again, it's all about the light uh, with trying to get these things right. So that's with the light off. It's with the Tagano light on. But, yeah, I mean, anyway, you can see all the balls under here. They're kind of, well, they're symmetrical um, by the looks of it, aren't they? Yep. Pretty darn close. But, anyway, yeah, the balls are directly on the back of the die there. You can see some large traces coming out here. They're obviously... Uh, the power pins and stuff like that, you know, getting data out of here because you've got some logic here. And so it looks like, yeah, we've got like four, possibly four quadrants of memory. Look, I don't know my dies and things like that, but I can certainly see that there's four separate quadrants in there. And we can actually zoom. Nah, that's the best zoom I can get on the Tagano microscope. But I have to put this under my uh, die microscope to see it. But yeah, there you go. It's fascinating. So Ken shouldn't have to do a lot to get these off, but obviously uh, the balls might be a problem. I don't know, how would you get that 
layer off because the balls are obviously on top of uh, like the memory architecture by the looks of it so they're obviously on their own layer and here's that small one once again uh, you can see like it's yeah you can see like all the oil burned and stuff like that but I don't know you can possibly see some architectural elements under there but uh, there's certainly lots of large traces isn't there look they're all interconnected it looks like you know there's gigantic rows of I mean this thing is completely this thing has a lot of balls completely filled with balls and uh, a lot of them look like they're look like they're joined so yeah this is a that's a fascinating little beast. No idea. Wouldn't even like to guess what that is. Yeah, I'm really going to need a better solvent to get these uh, really done. But once again, this is the larger size one. And it's just, look at the ball arrangement. Absolutely enormous. Can't really see anything under that. I can see like row arrangements under there. But that's all I can see for that one, so that's interesting. And here's the other large one, which I wasn't sure if it was different. Unfortunately, it's not. That little strand there is from my cotton bud I used to clean it. Yeah, there's another strand in there. Yeah, I think that's identical. I was hoping it might be different, but anyway, Ken's got two of those to play with. Almost looks like it's some, like, row and column arrangement, as if it's some, like, programmable device or something like like you know some programmable logic device or something like that perhaps but uh, it looks like it's impossible to tell unless you get all the uh, balls off so yeah good luck with that Ken uh, I'm sure you'll um, yeah get great uh, photos of these and can strip them away and whatnot because you need really nasty chemicals when you're dealing with uh, dyes like this and you need proper you know uh, fume extraction and proper safety measures and everything you really have to know what you're doing because some of the chemicals used um, to strip dyes and uh, get uh, you know really good dye photos it's yeah nasty stuff so not something that I do here in the lab but so I've got my Olympus microscope here, got the HDMI out going into the uh, ATEM and as you can see, and I can look on the big screen over here, we can see our solder balls, there they are. Look at the shallow depth of field as I focus on different parts of the uh, solder ball there, that's just remarkable. But anyway, we can go down, 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 down and focus on the die. Check that out, isn't that great? <laughs> Let's look at some elements in there, because they're rather interesting, aren't they? Wow, look at that. You've got some, a mixture of like large elements on there and smaller elements. So, so I don't know, all you uh, layout, silicon layout experts will be able to tell us all about that, I'm sure. Uh, yes, I can whack in more magnification. That's my uh, times 20. I can whack in my times 40. There we go, it even kept focus, mostly. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that, wow. Wow, that's, that's pretty terrific. So yeah, we can already see right inside these dies. That's terrific, that's the highest magnification I've got. It's a large pad down there. Check that out. You can really see the ball. Look at that, oh, that's beautiful. That's ah, a thing of beauty, joy forever. Look at that solder ball, and then you can see it on the top layer, and then you can see some distortion, optical distortion around the ball there, and you can see the elements down in there. That looks like a large pad, doesn't it? Like a bonding pad. My stage is not the best here. The stage is the XY platform. And I've got it sitting on a post-it note. I don't think it's entirely flat either. Sorry about that. It's a bit how you're doing. Yeah, I've always wanted to do a project where this uh where i motorize this uh stage and can really and then stitch uh die panoramas together that'd be really nice but anyway that's obviously some sort of like sram array something like that yeah i i believe these things had sram built in so i believe that's what we're seeing yep spread all over that although oh that was slightly different architecture but anyway you can see the different layers you can see the traces running on top there, like right over those cells, power traces, everything else. So that, that is pretty sweet. Yeah, my die is not completely flat. I can see the focus 
on this thing. It's on the it's on one side and then I sweep the focus. It's now in the center and it goes across. That's how just a slight tilt in your uh, in your stage, your XY platform here, or in this case, I've got it on a bloody post-it note, um, just just to prop it up. It, my stage actually doesn't go high enough uh, for this thing. I've got to fix that. Um, but yeah, I th that makes difference. The depth of field of this sucker. And what's on the side of the die here? There you go. I oh, know. Is that a, yeah? That doesn't look like a pad. There does it. They uh, test patterns down the side. Don't think we're going to see any Easter eggs. Hello, we have some text. M, IBM Liberty. Part number 37F3147. There you go. We got it. We got it. So we know exactly what we're looking at here. Thank you very much. And ZL31, yeah, 3147A again, RX3147. Oh, are, are they the different layers? Are they are they layer markers? ZL, RX, perhaps? They look, or yeah, they look like they're different depths. I, I can put one in focus, and then the other, maybe. Yeah, but you can see them on different layers. That's super cool. Wow. I like that. And here we go, I've got that other little die there. You can really see the elements inside there. You can see the balls, uh, the, uh, yeah, well, the pads. There's no more balls. If you want to see some balls, I can show you that in a minute. But uh, you can really see the elements. This is max magnification. You can really see the different layers. Yeah, you can really see the different layers inside there. And you can see how they change layers as well zoom out a tad there and show you that you can see the large uh, power traces as well going between some of the pads or are they just i don't know large signal connection traces i don't know what they are but yeah there you go and you can see a ball there you can see some genuine balls there look at that <laughs> that's gorgeous you can see the top of the solder and then just fade into the other layers. Ah, beautiful. Thing of beauty. Joy forever. So there you go. I hope you liked that video. If you did, please give it a big a thumbs up. As always, discuss down below over in the comments. Check me out on Odyssey, like 60,000 subs over there almost, and my EV Blog 2 channel. And I'll uh, baggy these up and send them off to Ken, and sure, he'll get some really great high-res uh, photos. He'll probably do some reverse engineering. Oh, it'd be sweet. Anyway, catch you next time.